So, what if this is it? What if maybe this might be the life you've always dreamed you're going to have? What if the love that you deeply seek has already arrived and this is it? Where do we go from here? And the reason I ask this question is because I think that there's something interesting about the way that the pursuit of love is forced onto us from a place of building up onto a pedestal this idea that there is a love outside of you that is one day going to find you and it will bring a sense of completion to your life that you will never experience anything like it to such an extent that you can never ever imagine your life without it again and it will be the ultimate closing of that circle for you and you get to say that you've done it you found it this is it I'm really curious about that because I just think that that message is mainly pushed onto women and nothing I'm saying necessarily in this particular thought stream right now is new in terms of how women are the ones who are targeted with this messaging of true love versus men. Because I rarely, I rarely see men pondering and pining over the concept of being in love and dreaming about one day finding their true love. I see men dreaming about getting head though. (laughs) I see men fantasizing about Ruby Rose, as they should. (laughs) I see some men fantasizing about me too, (laughs) as you should. But what I'm saying is, jokes aside, what I'm saying is, I don't I don't really see men obsessing over finding the one. What I see in men is a level of being so chilled out and so confident that they're going to find someone who's going to love them anyway, as insufferable as they are. And I just think that women should take that particular leaf out of men's book and adopt that nonchalance. Because I think that's the one time when men might be onto something. They don't give a fuck about finding love. They give a fuck about finding someone who's going to have sex with them. They give a fuck about finding someone who is going to take care of them when they get old. They give a fuck about finding someone who's going to help them pay their bills. They give a fuck about finding someone to lay their head. So all of these examples I've just listed are reasons that men pick women a lot of the time. So a man wanting to find someone who's going to have sex with him. I mean, that's the motivation behind most men approaching you. You think, oh, he's approached me because he's looking for the one and I might be the one. (laughs) He's approached me because he thinks that I'm really, really unique and different. He's approached me because my vibe is, see, I told you my vibe was just powerful. Oh, that's why he's approached me because I'm irresistible. And he told me that. He told me that. He can't quite put his finger on why he likes me. He just likes my vibes. See, because my energy is that strong. Yeah, okay, girl, if that's what you want to believe, believe what you want to believe in it. But the reality is, yeah, I'm quite amused by the ways that men will tell women exactly what they want to hear because they know that women are the ones who have been sold the marketing of true love. Meanwhile... How many times are you seeing men waking up in a fluster being like, oh my God, time is ticking and I still haven't met the one. I'm, 
I'm 30, I'm a 36 year old man and I haven't met the one. Time is ticking. What am I going to do? Because the reality is, yeah, there are women who don't even want to have kids and they're still pressed about time going and, and, and feeling deeply ashamed and disappointed that they haven't met the one. Because I think a lot of women have issue with accepting their lives and accepting themselves as they are. I really do, babe. The reason I say that is because as a woman who can proudly say that I accept my life as it is and I can genuinely, hand on heart, hand on titty, say that I'm not in a place where I'm looking for love because I have love in my life. Like, I know what it feels like to be loved by a man who sees me for who I am. And I know that he loves me so much that I can actually rely on him if I need to. Like, if I wanted to make him my emergency contact, I could do that because that's how reliable he's proven himself to be. And the best part is it's not a romantic or sexual love he just gets me he just he just sees he sees me as the powerful brave intelligent kind funny charismatic creative unique woman that I am and he tells me all the time and it doesn't come across contrived because that's intrinsic to who he is his personality is just that he's a loving person so it doesn't come across contrived or uh, biased because he wants something from me in the future no he's just a good person and he loves me so it's important I have always said this it's important for women to have male partnerships that aren't romantic that aren't sexual but that are based on the framework of love I think it really matters to have men in your life who love you who you're not fucking, who you're not having any kind of romantic encounters with because that's your proof that you can be loved by a man because a lot of women, they just want to feel like they can be loved by a man. And for me, I don't really see sex as a indicator of a man loving me. I see sex as an indicator of a man liking women. Like if a man is attracted to me, yeah, it's because I'm attractive, but he finds me attractive because he likes women. The, the fundamental basis of a man's attraction to a woman is because he likes women so I don't take it personally or I don't add any special weight to a man wanting to have sex with me because men want to have sex with women if they're straight like if he doesn't want to have sex with me there's someone else he's going to want to have sex with anyway so even if he declares the attraction to me yeah okay that's 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 normally what happens when you're straight so there's no there's no reason for me to be like oh, he's attracted to me could this be the one it's like mm, no for me to even have a the, the lot hmm, for me to have any kind of thought where i'm like could this be the one it's like look if he's paying all of my bills <laughs> he's paying all of my bills he's devoted to me he just won't go like I can't get rid of him if I tried he really wants to be involved in my life he sees a future with me so much so that he's already planning for the future and he's made tangible investments in a future that involves me and him uh -uh, now that's when I'll be like rah is this the one is this the one am I am I in a relationship am I is it giving girlfriend you know what I mean like that's the only time where I'd be like yeah this could be someone I could take seriously but outside of that I've already accepted my life. Like I've already in a, I'm already genuinely in a place where I sometimes have an out of body experience where I'm like, oh, this is really my life. 
I'm actually the girl that I never thought I'd be. And I'm not even talking about my career. I'm just talking about being a woman who has self-esteem enough to not be governed by men's desire for me. Because a lot of women, they let men control them way too much. And it's not even about a man telling you what to do. It's more just like the prospect and possibility of a man liking you is enough for you to hand over your autonomy to a hypothesis of a man just in hopes that a man's going to like you and in the in the intention of making yourself more easy to be loved you don't, you don't need to make yourself easy to be loved for someone to love you like if someone wants to love you they're going to want to love you in it and i just think that as a woman men deserve to be put through the ring of fire to declare their love for you as they should and the ring of fire is simply them not being able to control you because a lot of men remember they expect women to be controllable and malleable and obedient because patriarchy so i think a lot of women are deeply afraid to accept that this might be it because then it leaves you with the responsibility of acknowledging that your happiness is your responsibility and your life is what you make it and I think it also opens up the thought channel of wow so this is not about me forcing things with men because I see a lot of women doing this thing where it's like they're desperate so they have force themselves to go on dates with men who don't even deserve to be seen sat at a table with them they are forcing themselves to tolerate treatment from men they shouldn't be tolerating because nobody's perfect they are gaslighting themselves into believing this is the best they can do when they have bound themselves to this man who is just draining their life force and it's really sad to see and when I observe those women, what I see is someone who's scared to be alone. And I think that's quite interesting because I think a man's biggest fear is a woman who knows how to be alone. Which is why, ironically, when men catch women declaring their love for their own lives and when they notice women talking about enjoying their solitude... Here they come in the comments being like, you're going to die lonely. It's like, actually, most women don't die lonely. Most women die surrounded by family and community and people who fucking love them and rely on them (laughs) because women are usually the most reliant pillars of their communities and their families. So women rarely die alone. It's actually men who die alone. Because most men do not invest their energy into fostering deep interwoven community with other people. And most men do not sow healthy seeds in relationships with people. Most men are selfish and insufferable. So it's actually men who die alone. And also most men don't actually experience the full capacity of love that they should experience because they're not prepared to be accountable. They're not prepared to be vulnerable. They're not prepared to step outside of their own selfishness. So their loneliness doesn't just happen in death. It happens while they're alive. Most men are lonely. And I believe that men do deserve their loneliness because their loneliness comes from their patriarchal and abusive treatment towards women. So the loneliness men are referencing is their loneliness in reference and relation to women. And men tend to bring up their loneliness when women discuss not wanting to sleep with them anymore. Because remember that men, men benefit more from sex than women do. I'm going to repeat that. Men benefit more from sex than women do. So once a woman starts to really realize that, like, I'm not going to lie, sex is not really all that. Sex is enjoyable. But it's not enjoyable enough for me to make life-changing decisions as a result of it like you mean to tell me what 10 to 25 at most minutes of pleasure is going to be the reason I'm going to bind myself to a man who's going to put me in debt 10 to 25 minutes of pleasure at most 
it's going to be the reason I'm going to let a man live in my house rent free 10 to 25 minutes at most of pleasure it's going to be the reason I'm going to let a man believe he's irreplaceable to me yikes couldn't be me I'm just not doing that it's not how I am and I'm thankful to God that I'm not like that like I'm grateful for that particular apathetic streak that I have and maybe it's something to do with being on the spectrum and when I say the spectrum I'm talking about being great asexual and also being neurodivergent <laughs> I'm actually undiagnosed neurodivergent I just know that I just know I just know that I'm neurodivergent because as I get older I start to observe certain things I'm like oh my god it's giving neurodivergent all over babe like you can just tell from how I am like <laughs> okay there are things you don't know about me that I'm going to tell you now so one of the things is uh sensory issues are a big thing for me so I deeply despise straws I can use a straw but I really gag at the feeling of like putting a straw in my mouth like I have to fold my lips inwards to use a straw just to minimize the contact on my actual lips it's a weird sensory thing same thing with drinking from cups or glasses like I have to just like you can't see what I'm doing if you're listening on audio but to describe I'm folding my lips inwards like into my teeth if that makes sense so that if the rim of the cup touches my mouth it's like barely touching it I hate that I also have a weird thing with spoons. So um, you see how in yogurt adverts, when the woman takes a spoon out of the pot of yogurt and then she puts the spoon of yogurt in her mouth and it's like she clasps the spoon tightly with both of her lips and then pulls at the spoon. So there's no streak of yogurt left behind on that spoon. That makes me gag. I hate that. I hate I don't like I don't use spoons in that way. I don't like being looked at when I'm eating with a spoon because you will see the streak of the teeth marks on the spoon if I'm eating something that is like a pasty texture like an oatmeal or a soup or a yogurt because it's a sensory thing. Same way I feel about like if there's a partic- if there's one crumb in the bed, oh my god, I hate that. Labels on my clothes, hate that. So well, that's one of the reasons why I'm like, yeah, girl, it's definitely given neurodivergent. And also, if you don't know this already, I'm a very um, hyper-focused kind of person, special interest energy. So I have a whole podcast about discussing dating because I'm interested in it and I can talk about it forever because I know a lot about it and I spent a lot of time studying it and it's fun to me. I'm also, uh, I think me being neurodivergent li- links directly to my great asexuality. So great asexual is what I would describe as someone who is asexual, which to my definition and understanding, an asexual person is someone who doesn't experience the desire to have sex with other people. Um, some people will describe it differently, but it's something along those lines which you may or may not heard of make which you may or may not have heard of as a definition it's quite a common definition you just you just don't feel it for other people um but why i say i'm gray asexual is because i exist in the gray area of the asexual chunk of the spectrum where i believe i'm someone who like i still experience fleeting sexual attraction to other people but i can go, i can hand on heart tell you right now that i can go if I needed to I can go the rest of my life without having sex with another person and I won't feel this sense of anguish or FOMO but having said that you know if I come across someone that is doing all the things I want them to do I'll probably feel sexually attracted to them but I don't like sex is not something that attaches me to someone like I see sex as a tool to get what I want but I also see it as something that is enjoyable 
So there's a level of apathy that I have towards men. And also, this is going to sound so horrible. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me, person listening. I don't mean to sound horrible. I, I, my, I mean to express context that helps you understand why I'm so able to act on the thoughts that I share with you. And what I'm about to say is that I feel very apathetic towards a lot of women who get themselves in situations that they could have avoided. Like, I don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel this sense of like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened to you. Oh my God, I can't believe that a man took advantage of you because you gave him all of the keys and the entire map to your psyche. Oh, that's so awful that that happened to you. I don't feel that I don't feel that sympathy. I'm just like, girl, that that's can you hear what you just said? Can you hear what you just said? So you mean to tell me the first day you met this man, you told him all of your triggers, you told him what happened to you when you were five, you told him what makes you have panic attacks, you told him that you don't like when guys text you and then don't respond to you for hours. You told him all of that and then surprise, surprise, he did all the things to flare up your triggers. Because he knew that that's how to control you. Once a man can have you emotional, that means he can control you. So you did all that. And of course, he's acted the way he's acting towards you. And now you're having a full on blown out emotional crisis. I don't feel sorry for you. What I feel is I feel anger on your behalf, but I'm not going to do anything about that anger because it's not my life. But if you, most women are not prepared to do what they need to do to actually get the life they deserve if they're going to be dating men most women are not prepared to do that so I just kind of just like well that's your life you chose <laughs> not me I'm not doing that because I'm way too self-centered to even find myself in that situation and I'm someone who I love my life so much that I know how to walk away at the first sight of what to me feels like an offense and sometimes walking away isn't necessarily physically removing yourself in that moment sometimes walking away is mentally acknowledging and accepting this guy's not seeing me again after today he's not seeing me again <laughs> I may be smiling but deep inside I'm planning my exit <laughs> like the apathy really has helped me and again I really want to make it clear in expressing my apathy that this is not about me being a bitch or a mean girl some people might understand it in that way I'm really sorry if that's how it comes across what I'm saying is that the apathy is there because I know that you can do better. If I can do it, you can do it because it's not about, it's not about like access to certain men or being a certain standard of beauty. This is just about how you handle situations that you're met with. There's a path that you usually follow for a reason. There are choices that you repeatedly make for a reason. There are patterns that you repeatedly follow for a reason. There's a comfort that you have not interrogated. This is where I come in. I'm not, I'm not sympathetic towards that stuff anymore because I think it's really silly. Like, as a grown woman, there has to come a point where you really need to accept that men don't love like women do because... Men are not the ones who are victimized by patriarchal conditioning to such an extent that they lose their lives, their access to education, their access to opportunities, their access to safety and opportunities just because they're a woman. Men don't experience that. Men reinforce the very patriarchy that affects women and by proxy affects men, but they're happy to reinforce it because they benefit from the dominion they have over women. I want to make that clear. So for me, the reason why my apathy exists and why I feel so comfortable having this podcast and saying all the things that I say is because I'm living the result of my mindset where I have a level of peace that a lot of people don't have because they think that the peace has to come from being in a relationship with someone who just really, really loves you and really accepts you and what happens is they end up in relationships with people who are clearly not good for them, but they refuse to let it go because they put so much time into it. And this is why I don't believe in over-investing in men. 
because the more you invest the more emotionally attached you become and once you're emotionally attached you're less rational you're less able to just leave because you've put all this time into it now and you're telling yourself well what if I leave and another woman gets all the work I've done okay so <laughs> and because what you're gonna mean to tell me that so that someone else won't won't benefit off the man you've built you're going to just stay and continue building him to your own detriment until you've got no bricks left. And then what happens? And then what happens? Have you thought about that? Because my thing is, look, that whole fear that women have of like, oh, what if I leave and then his life with another woman is better? That fear comes from you not knowing how to accept your life. And that fear comes from you not having your own foundational source of joy. Because the whole thing about like, Oh, what if, like, he meets another woman and then he's just amazing to her? Let's entertain that possibility. Okay, he's amazing to her, but he's not going to be amazing to her because he has intrinsically done the work and changed from a place of having lived through confronting the darkest sides of himself. He's going to treat her probably better than you because he sees her as more unattainable than you, so he knows he has to love bomb her to get her. So whatever you're seeing online where your ex-man has moved on and you're seeing him treating her so well and all these pictures of their holidays and trips, girl, her time is coming. Because <laughs> how a man treats you, is it's not necessarily about you. The treatment and version you get of a man, of course, it's based on what you enable. But if he has a propensity to be abusive and to lie and to manipulate, he's already a manipulative person. So the next woman he gets with... Part of him being nice is his manipulation process. Duh. <laughs> so you've got nothing to worry about. So even if another woman gets a nice fluffier version of him or gets a version of him that has all this knowledge of, I don't know, the books that you put him onto or the music you put him onto, you still got a version of him that another woman built. Like a lot of these men are just getting their personalities from women that they have sucked dry like a bone. So you have to learn how to just cut your losses and keep it moving or else you become that person who is bound to a man because you've already spent five years there. So I might as, well, might as well stay because you don't know how to live your life without him. You don't know how to accept that. What if this is it? What if my life as it is, is the joy I'm supposed to feel? Because the perk, the one main perk of having the mindset of what if this is it? what if this is my life and what if this is the this is the part at the end of the rainbow that I'm already living in it means that if you do come across someone that you actually genuinely resonate with who loves you who you love them and there's a mutual connection and respect and adoration and this man is just devoted to you uh, yeah you are gonna be like oh this is great but you're not gonna be attached to it from a place of lack or fear because you already have a foundation of joy that you've cultivate it for yourself so <laughs> when slash if that man decides to be a fucking idiot you can send him on his merry way and you already have a, a lovely life it's like playing a video game a first person shooter and the game works in increments of checkpoints so if you've played something like assassin's creed or metal gear then you will know that when you're on a certain mission or a quest you will encounter challenges that might involve your character being killed or being injured. And so it's in your interest to save at a particular checkpoint, meaning that when you save the game at a checkpoint, if you was to get killed or if you were to somehow die your character, you will be revived where you last saved the game at. So you don't have to start from the entire beginning. That to me... Is what it feels like when you have an internal source of joy that hasn't come from men or anybody else. It has come from a place of accepting your life and being able to acknowledge how far you have come. This is per this is personal, okay? This is deeply personal. This is not even about men. This is about your perception of your life and your perspective over what joy looks like for you. Because if you don't know how to accept your life as it is now, I promise you, you will be that woman who loses herself in relationships and 
isn't able to leave men because you're scared of what you're going to go back to once that man leaves. So if you are currently living in a life that you don't necessarily enjoy, this is your opportunity to create a life that you enjoy. And it doesn't have to be this whimsical sort of like YouTube spiritual guru, motivational guru thing of like, yeah, live the life you love. No, I'm just saying from a place of like, start doing more things for yourself that you really love. Start following curiosities that you've always had in the side of your eye. If you've always been curious about learning how to play saxophone, start now. Start taking classes. For me, pole dancing is something I deeply enjoy doing. Ironically, and a lot of pole dancers will tell you this, if they, if, if they get it, if, they, if they're seeing what I'm seeing, a lot of pole dancers will tell you the same thing, right? Ironically, pole dancing is a way to decenter men. Oh, let me land. Wait, let me finish. Pole dancing is a way to decenter men because as much as pole dancing is something that has its roots in the male gaze, because obviously pole dancing comes from stripping and the strip club is largely attended by men and sex work is an industry of selling a sexual experience to men. That's the foundation of it, of course, as we know it. And pole dancing, of course, extrapolates its elements from that. However, the act of pole dancing itself, what it requires to be a pole dancer, you need a level of focus because when you're actually on the pole, you have to be very aware of what your body is doing because you can really hurt yourself. You have to be ambitious because there are going to be moves you're going to want to learn how to do and it's a stage by stage thing so it's a very humbling experience to go through where you have to start as a beginner even if you have a background of bodybuilding and you're already seasoned in lifting heavy things including your own body weight and more there's still a level of conditioning that you have to expose your body to with pole dancing including you have to develop calluses on the base of your fingers, right at the top of your palm. The similar kind of calluses that people who go to the gym have or people who um, do calisthenics have, where it's thickened skin that has formed from gripping the pole so many times that when you now touch a pole after developing those calluses over the course of months, you don't feel pain when you're holding the pole and suspending your body weight. That's something that only time can facilitate the growth of that particular thing. You can't grow calluses overnight. It's the same thing as being a guitarist. You need to have calluses on the tips of your fingers or else it will really hurt when you play the guitar. But it has to hurt to form those calluses. And you can't form those calluses without playing the guitar. So there's a level of focus and dedication that pole dancing involves. And in those months of forming all that focus and dedication, you're also developing an interest for this thing. You're also developing community because there's other people at the same learning stage as you, but there are also people who are maybe a bit more involved in this than you. So you have friends and people you look up to and people who you're learning alongside and you are in this whole new world of doing something that's for yourself. And of course, not to mention that you feel sexy and you have all these cute heels and clothes and cute videos of yourself dancing and of course you know you you sometimes you will get male attention but you learn to not take male attention seriously because you know how men are responsive to anything that is in any capacity sexual like so it just really changes your perspective on yourself your body what you're capable of physically doing and it gives you this new layer of enjoyment in your life that isn't about men because when you are on that, I promise you any pole dancer will tell you, when you are on that pole upside down, the number one thing on your mind is not a man. <laughs> the number one thing on your mind is I need to make sure that I have placed my knee correctly on this pole so that I do not slip and crack my skull. <laughs> it's not about men. Um, and so that's why I said pole dancing, ironically, is something that a lot of women will agree with me that has been a, that is a domain to decenter men. And so when you know how to decenter men, you know how to 
live a life that isn't rooted in desperation. And so when you're not living a life that's rooted in desperation, you're not susceptible to men's low ball advances because men are going to throw chicken bones at you, especially if you're a woman who they find attractive. And if they think that you're likely to be responsive to male attention, because they, they know that most women live for male attention. So if they know that you're likely to be responsive to male attention, they're going to give it to you in the hopes that you'll be so responsive so much so that they will be able to have this level of power over you where they know that once they take away that attention, then they notice that there's a shift in your body language that implies that you want more of that attention. But if you live a life that you already enjoy and accept as it is, then a man's games won't move you. The propaganda of you better hurry up and find the one that don't apply to you. (laughs) I think it's more important to facilitate a life that you love than it is to hashtag find the one. Cause what even is the one, especially if you're dating men, I'm sorry, but there's no such thing as the the one man. (laughs) I think that there is such thing as coming across men across your life who will resonate with you. And maybe one day you'll find a man who you like enough to want to bind yourself to him for eternity. But there's a huge asterisk next to that because you will bind yourself to him. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you will bind yourself to him with the mentality that should this man play about with you, you're leaving and you're taking his things with you. (laughs) If you know what I mean, girl. (laughs) But um, I'm so happy to be of the mindset that my life is happening for me. And I love it here. And... There is something really interesting about being in the position where I'm not, I'm not desperate for male attention. And so when men do try to get my attention, it's interesting because they are doing what they're used to getting away with, with other women. And so I just ignore. So for example, right, there's this guy who, he's, it's it's over a year now that he's been, sort of flirting with me online you know the usual instagram flirting flirting with me online he's this feels so tacky saying this because it is tacky he's a fucking dj (laughs) and it's so tacky to be affiliated romantically with a dj because we know djs are whores for attention and they're so easy they're so easy hence why i'm not dating him or giving him any attention but He's been flirting with me for over a year now. And the flirting is more just sort of like sending fire emojis to pictures and videos of me dancing on Instagram. Like, you know, I pole dance and I'm I'm beautiful. So he's watching. He's always watching my stories. He's always engaging. And so uh, I want to say it was maybe like last summer, early last summer, maybe he invited me to a set he was doing somewhere in London. And he doesn't live in London, but, you know, he's internationally booked. So he invited me to a set he was doing. I really, I, I love his music. Let me make it clear that like, he's, he's a great DJ. He's a great musician. He's a frequent collaborator of one of the biggest musicians in the world right now. So I have respect for him, but the respect is not something I conflate with admiring him and therefore putting him on a pedestal so he invited me to his set I went I had a great time however I mean I don't blame this one on him because he's a DJ so he had to be focused on his set you know but he never contacted he knew I was there he saw me he never contacted me to be like you know while I'm in the city let's let's let me take you out somewhere lovely (laughs) <laughs> I don't like a let's hang out. No, I like when a man is like, I'd love to take you out somewhere lovely. So, you know, he didn't give me none of that. He didn't e- He didn't even, you know, try to do anything. So I was like, okay, fine. And then a few months flew by and he was in London again because he was um, supporting uh, the huge musician who, on, who he frequently collaborates with at a festival. And so, of course, he's in London again and he contacts me to tell me he's in London I'm like, okay, 
And then, um, then he tells me he's free all weekend. And I was like, oh, well, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you're going to have a really fun time. Because look, one thing I'm not going to do is if a man throws me a hint, I'm not going to read into it and respond based on my reading into it. I like for a man to be literal and verbal. So instead of telling me, oh, I'm free all weekend and I just leave it there, he should have, as a gentleman, be like, I'm free all weekend. What does your weekend look like? I'd love for us to do something together. He didn't do that. He just told me I'm free all weekend. So I was like, oh, okay, that sounds like you're going to have a great time. Because, like, you know, okay. And then nothing came of that. So I was like, mm, okay then. And then he came back again a few months later to tell me that he's got a residency in the very venue where he first invited me to come to his show meaning that he's going to be frequently in London now because he's got a number of shows to be performing at that venue as a DJ so of course that means he's going to be in London more often and so I made a joke right this is me this is me shooting my shot okay this is me giving him an opportunity to take me out if he's not sure whether I'll be receptive I've given him the clear green light in what I'm about to say which is when he told me that he's got a residency first of all I said congratulations that's really cool and then I said to him well so and then I said to him so when are you going to take me out to eat some yummy jollof rice now that you're in my city and he was like it's our city now ha 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 but he never he never made any um acknowledgement of me asking him when he's going to take me out to eat so then i was like okay uh, then i felt this uh, i felt disgusted uh. i was like how do women if i'm feeling disgusted by asking a man when he's going to take me out to eat jollof rice because he's been flirting with me for the past year how do women feel when they're like desperately like moving to men in the street and like chatting men up because i felt really i felt the, the food come up to my throat when i didn't get the response i deserved not even deserved because it's not about i'm not entitled to his attention not even deserve it's like i didn't get the response that i expected because he has been on me for a year clearly not on me enough as it seems but after that i completely changed the way that i view him so i muted him on instagram so that's where we communicate i muted him so basically it means i don't see his posts anymore I don't see his stories, whether he's dead or alive, couldn't give a rat's tail, babe. And I don't wish, I don't hate the man, I don't wish him anything negative. God forbid anything horrible happens to him. But what I mean by saying I don't, I don't care if he's dead or alive is more just like referencing the lack of attraction I feel towards him now after I've given him a clear indicator that this is the part where you ask me when I'm available for you to spend money on me, sir. So then he came back again. Uh, as of when I'm saying this, he came back yesterday. <laughs> to invite me yet again to the show I told you that he's got a residency at in London. And do you know what I did this time? Maybe like 10 minutes after he sent the message. Because it was obvious that I was already online because I'd posted a story that he'd already seen. Maybe like two minutes before he'd sent me the message so 10 minutes after he sent me the message the message being hey would you like to um come he even said queen hey queen hey queen i'd love to invite you on my vip guest list to come to my show happening on xyz date do you know what i did i opened the message and i closed the message and i went about my life so all he's going to see, because you know Instagram's got this this uh, feature where if someone has seen your message, you don't even have to open the chat with them to see that they've seen it. All it says is seen. So he's just got a seen receipt there. I'm not saying nothing to him. I'm not going to. First of all, how dare you call me queen and not treat me like one? I hate when men do that. That's why you cannot be a woman who falls for men calling you queen or goddess without showing you queen or goddess treatment. Okay, don't call me queen and all you've got for me is inviting me to come on your VIP guest list because the reality is 
He's inviting me to come to his show on VIP guests because I'm going to make him look good. You want me to come and fill up space in your venue for your show? Things would have been different if he approached me and said, Hey, Queen, I would love to take you out for food. I'm in town. And if it so happens to be that he also wants to invite me to his show, then fine. Even if it was, let's say he invited me to that show as he did, and then he's added to the message and said he wants to take me out as well. Fam, I like, I actually really enjoy his music, his sets. I think he's a great DJ. I don't think he's a bad person. I just think that he's a Nigerian man. <laughs> like, but why I'm sharing that story and how I responded and reacted to him is to give you an example of what it looks like to enjoy your life and love your life and not be easily influenced by a man's attention towards you. If a man calls me queen and he's not treating me like one, the queen comment is null and void. He's, he's, get, he gets a lot of money and a lot of attention as a DJ. And he is a frequent and personal collaborator of one of my favorite musicians in the whole world and that is not enough for me to move desperately it's just not enough nothing is enough for me to move desperately of a man because as far as I'm concerned if I want to stand out to this man which this isn't even my intention in the way that I've now responded to him by just ignoring him but automatically I'm going to now stand out to him and he's going to now be like why does she ignore me because he's a Nigerian man and I already, know, I already know that to get to a Nigerian man, you have to get to his ego. Then you get to his pockets and that's how you get to his heart. <laughs> but that's not my intention with him because he's for the streets. What I'm saying is you need to live a life that you love so that if a man comes to try and talk to you from a place of um, kind of lowballing you or giving you sort of casual treatment, that doesn't reflect what you know you expect from men, you don't have to take it because you already love your life. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by not going to a show. I don't feel like I've missed out on anything by not replying to him because if I'm of the mindset that, oh no, this guy is a, is a, is a star and he's, and he's a frequent, he's the team member of someone who is the, the star of all the stars that I would love to one day meet. If I went down that rationale, I would just be letting this DJ guy just get away with whatever. And this is what most women do with him. They let him get away with whatever because they care about the optics of being seen around him because they want to be around the OG that he DJs for. And I'm not one of those girls. I'm just not. I love my life way too much. I love myself way too much to not devalue myself in that way. And to be continued, but I just think that, yeah, if you look at your life and you're like, wow, maybe this is it. You will stop being scared of, oh my God, am I going to find the one? Oh my God, I need to give my dating life a chance. Oh my God, I just need to just put myself out there. Just relax, bro. Relax. Focus on living a life you enjoy. Because you know what, yeah? You don't know when you're going to die. And you don't want to have spent what could potentially be your last year on this earth, God forbid, forcing it with men on dating apps. That's so embarrassing. Because that last year could have instead been spent on you giving the things you've always wanted to try a fucking go and not letting anyone try you because you deserve to be loved and you deserve to be spoken to with high regard and you deserve to be treated in high regard but more importantly you deserve to live a life that you really enjoy and live a life that you've chosen not settled for and so I implore anybody who's listening to this to maybe start exploring the concept of what if this what if this is it what if this is the it that everyone writes poems about and makes films about and makes music about and makes art about this love and this amazing feeling what if what if it's already been here what if I've already got it because sometimes I think that we invalidate our ability to love ourselves because we think that a man's ability to love us holds more value and more importance and more weight than the love we can have for ourselves and that is another thing to interrogate for another day but I just want to say for now thank you for listening I really enjoyed this particular episode <laughs> I had to giggle I hope you giggle, giggled too and I just yeah 
I implore you to just go out there and enjoy your life while you still have it because you don't know when your time is coming. Take all the care and I'm going to see you soon.